This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome to Bachelor Party. Zach, week three. I'm Juliette Littman. I'm here with Callie Curry. Hi, Callie. How are you? I am great. I'm going to try my best to bring energy to this <laughs> since I think it needs it. You know, first of all, last week I had way more fun talking to you and Jesse Palmer than watching the show, but you know, the podcast makes it worth it. So uh, I'm down. <laughs> also, I thought on that note, we would begin each week of the Zach era by saying nice things about him. You know, it's like, it's sort of like met, like the bachelor party version of like meditating and like finding your center. It's like, let's be positive about Zach. Let's lead with positivity. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a good tone setter. And so on that note, I have some nice things to say about Zach. Do you have your own nice things prepared? Yeah, I think they're probably going to overlap because it's not like there's like, you know, long list, but... Yeah, it's not like every moment. <laughs> but first of all, Zach is the opposite of most bachelors and that he is decisive. When he's not feeling it, he tells these girls and he moves on. And I like it. Good strat, Zach. Good for you. He did that with Bailey, aka Balin. Uh, he did it with Brianna. And he's just like... And then, of course, we're talking about Christina. But he's just like... He goes with his gut and he goes with how he's feeling. I'm very into that. Um, I'm into it too. Also, I feel like he is someone who's just like, I'm not going to waste anyone's time. Yeah. Like, he's like, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste the viewer's time. I was thinking with how, because like Bailey was kind of a shocker to me. Like I me thought too. he would be like, oh, it's the beginning, whatever, whatever. He was just like, yeah, it's we just don't have it. I was like, whoa. Like <laughs> she was, I was thinking like, if I'm this shocked, she has to be really shocked, which after that quick combo, I didn't get how she didn't get it. She was like, I'm going to go back for more rejection. Mm -hmm. um, my strategy probably would have been to just like exit after that first bit. Like he essentially told me he's done. Ariel interrupted them and Zach was like, I want to talk about that more. And she probably thought that meant like, I want to talk about how to get back on track. But he was like, no, I want to talk about how I you, send you, you need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I picked up the send you home vibe. So I probably just would have... If, if I came back, I would have been like, so I think it's just best that I leave. Like I would have beat him to it. I'm not yeah. going to let you send me home after that. But yeah, that was shocking. I was thinking to myself, like producers probably don't like him. No. They, they think that he's probably making it hard. Not a lot of drama. Yeah. Also, he clearly does not fuck with drama at all. No, not at all. He's just he like, has no, no, yeah. He has anyone that is causing any sort of drama. He's like, probably not for me, which, listen, is he boring? Yeah, but in real life, no one wants someone strategy. who's starting drama. Yeah, I'm like, I agree with you. As a viewer, do I need a little bit of it? Sure. Could we have kept Christina for a few more weeks? Absolutely. But am I am I mad at you for not wanting that? No. No, I, I agree. It's a good life strategy. It's a bad TV strategy. But one thing that I've also noticed, he's really not into the women who he met at after the final rose because that was Bailey. That was Brianna. I think Christina was one of the women after the final rose, if I recall correctly. In general, it just seems like those ones, not so into. I also mm -hmm. want to talk about Christina meeting the family on an early date. 
that's a death knell. That is not a benefit. Like, because even if it goes well, it's like he has like a visual of what that's like. And it's like, it's kind of like having sex too early when there's no like nothing to build up to. And you're just sort of like, oh, I know what this is like. And so for him, who's like involved in like, who's like invested in in like a picture perfect relationship, he has the picture. So there's like no wondering. So there's kind of like no reason to keep her around. I agree that it's not great, but not for that reason. I think it's not great because I think it works against you in the house. Mm. Like no matter what, first of all, Christina was annoying as hell this week. So I'm not trying to like make an excuse for her. But do I think there was a tad bit of like haterade and jealousy mixed in there? Absolutely. Like there's just no way to get around that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that's... I personally would not want that date. She did bring it up a lot. Um, a lot. <laughs> we'll talk more about her in a minute. Uh, another positive about Zach. I thought he was kind of funny in regards to his chest hair when he was like, hard launch of my chest hair for the for the pool party. It made me realize how many of the bachelors wax their chest. And mm-hmm. I never really thought about it. I have no problem with, with chest hair. I'm like, also like, be natural, do whatever you want. I thought it was kind of funny, but it also was not sexual at all. <laughs> the way he introduces himself. I did not think it was funny. I did not laugh at that at all. Um, <laughs> it's very much Zach humor. I'm not a big chest hair person. Like, a little is fine. Yeah, it's natural. Zach is Zach is fine, he, but he's borderline too much. Like, he's right there for me. It kind of looks like he did wax his chest for The Bachelorette and it grew back and he decided not to do it again. That was sort of the impression I was getting. Hmm. But... Maybe. Whatever. Do you, man? Uh, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm glad that he's just like, this is who I am, whatever. I also did like that he didn't wear super long shorts. I hate long bathing suit shorts. Yes. Um. So I can give him that. But at the football challenge, I thought he also was wearing appropriately length shorts as well. Like he looks <laughs> casual. Like he he lo- he looked right. <laughs> Lastly, for nice things I can say about Zach. Actually, this is not nice, so never mind. <laughs> Just say it. Now you have to. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I liked slash I didn't like actually his reaction to when he walked into the pool party, mm. he was like, oh my gosh. And I'm just like... Look at the girls in bikinis. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just... Just it's like a, just the whole thing is creepy. I also, as as a woman, would never ever want to be in that scenario. Not the like bathing suits or whatever, but like, that's fine. Like hanging out with women at the pool, sure. But like, this this like, we're all in like our bikinis fighting over a guy. It's like just absolutely worst case scenario. I don't know. Just sounds awful. I don't know if I feel any less strong than being in a dress fighting over a guy. Fighting over a guy just doesn't seem like fun. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, no thank. No, no thank you. It's very... It's like... It just sounds terrible. Bachelor in Paradise would be more my vibe. Like, there's plenty of guys. There's plenty of girls. Yeah, Sure, there around. might be two of us going after one. But like, it's not 50 of us going after one. Yeah. But this reminds me. I should have said it at the top. People, I'm watching Love Island. Callie, you got me into it. We're, gonna, we're watching Love Island UK on the Hulu pace. Unlike last season, we will not have egregious spoilers. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it on Mondays about the previous week. So Callie's not up to date. So I'll be asking her a lot of questions this week, but we will be discussing Love Island. And I'm really enjoying it. Thank you for getting me to this place. I'm so happy to have you here. I also was thinking like, if you do enjoy it as much as I feel like you are right now, you just have to at some point go back and watch other seasons. I know. People say three and four are really good. Three, four, and five are okay. really, really good. Five is really fun because Molly May and Tommy are in that. And I think everyone knows who they are now. Mm-hmm. So to watch like their beginning is really fun. But yeah. Are they still together? They just had a baby. Oh my God. Wow. Good they for them. They had a baby and she's the creative director for Pretty Little Thing. Like she's doing very well. Wow. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um. It's sad that Caroline Flack is the host and like that she died, but I'll watch her anyway. It's fine. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know why I had to bring that up. Sorry. There's a few suicides. Yeah, I know. It's really sad. Really, really sad. All right. We're going to talk about the happy stuff of Love Island at the end, but let's get back to The Bachelor. Callie, did Christina deserve to go home this week? No, I don't think so. Are you surprised she went home? Oh, I was shocked. Me too. I was shocked. I could not believe it. 
at the very least, I felt producers would be like, you can't send her home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I- what do they have now, Christina? Like, who's stirring the pot in there? I thought we had like at least two more weeks of her being like a villain. I don't know, but I was also thinking to myself, like, when she didn't get the rose, because also he didn't send her home. He just didn't give her a rose, which is also is kind of crazy. It's really fucked up. It's worse. Yeah. <laughs> he ended the cocktail party to spend hours or the pool party to spend hours thinking about if he needed to send home Christina. And he, the conclusion he came to was yes. So that's yes. brutal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure we didn't see all the conversations with him. Every single woman had to have been like, she She's was doing the most. Yeah. I do think that the charity part of it was probably the worst of yeah. what she did. Yeah. But I, um, when she was like walking out the door, I was like, she must be coming back, right? Like I literally was like, there's no way she's got to pop up mid-season. She probably won't. But that's how... I was t- I was just taken back. Also, I drafted her, so I was pissed. Yeah, I, I I feel sorry for you. Let's see how you're doing. I was gonna check in. I'm doing really bad. I think I only have one left. <laughs> Let's see. Your team was Becca. I believe she's gone. Olivia, I think she's gone. Christina, gone. Greer, unfortunate. That's my one. But you also have Kylie, who's awesome. I love Kylie. Oh, Kylie! I forgot about Kylie. I have Brooklyn. Allie and Jess. I'm actually looking pretty good. Those three are, are doing well. Wow. We'll we'll talk about Allie, I'm sure. Yeah. Jody has Katie, Mercedes, Charity, Ariel, and Brianna. So she's got four of her five still. Great job, Jody. Wait, Brianna's gone. Yeah. It's four or five. Katie's still here, Mercedes, Charity, and Ariel. Oh, Ariel. Who I do not like. Yeah. <sighs> Me either. Anyway, I was shocked Christina left. She was really annoying in, in like the way she talks at the group dates and everything, but I don't know. She just is sort of like a run run of the mill, like bachelor villain. And so the fact that she's gone so quickly is shocking. It wasn't even that bad. I know. She didn't really insult anyone. There maybe it was worse than what we saw. It had to have been. She the very first time she mentioned like being on a group date, like she's like, I haven't been on a group date. So and I was just like, Oh my God, shut the fuck up. (laughs) Um everyone there was kind of like, uh so she must have been saying stuff like all day about like I haven't been on a group date. I have one-on-one, like having more time with him, blah, 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 whatever. Are you familiar with the movie Clueless? Yeah. You know when Cher says to Ty, when's your birthday? And she's like, May. And Cher's like, oh, my birthday's in April. So as someone older, let me explain to you. And then it's like something <laughs> ridiculous. And I just feel like Christina That's is the same what it way. reminded you of? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. As someone who's been on a one-on-one and you all have not, let me just explain <laughs> this about Zach. And so she probably is just like Constantly, super condescending. Though. Yeah, and condescending about yeah. it. The only thing where I was just, like, that stuff is annoying, though. I don't think it makes you a bad person. You're just annoying. Like, shut up. Yeah. Yeah. The charity of it all, I think there's a lot of layers to that that I think are fucked up. One, if anyone gets a group date, Rose, you're not supposed to be like, I'm confused. Like, yeah. what are you confused about, babe? Like, I wish, obviously, charity seems like, and I know you were kind of iffy with her. Do you, I like, I actually think she is genuine. I don't know if you still do or not. But. I do. I, I like her. I just, like, she's not really like someone I'd want to spend time with, but I think she seems like very nice. Yeah. So she did it to the wrong person because everyone there was, seems to really like her. Yeah. So I'm like, you did it to the wrong person because she did not stand up for herself at all. Like, I would have been like, not sure what you're confused about, but I'm happy to help you. He chose me over you. That's what happened. <laughs> do you need that to be explained further? I'm happy to do that. You spent a whole extra 10 hours with him and he still chose me over you after a 15-minute conversation. <laughs> like, that's how I would have handled it. Probably not the right way. But like, Charity's feelings were actually hurt. I would also say being one of the Black contestants with a white bachelor saying you're confused on why I got a rose is also like, they're already probably like, there's layers of insecurity there. There's layers of like, I'm the only black girl on this date. And like, so for, for you to say that in that situation too, I thought was really fucked up. So that wasn't great. Yeah. I also think that like, is that the kind of thing that you would call microaggression or is that just an aggression? I think that's just an aggression. <laughs> it's just like, a, yeah, it's it's fucked up. And I definitely think that, I don't think Christina has done much to, to earn the benefit of the doubt, especially as it really, I mean, the, also the women that we've seen her kind of like talk to in a way that's really impacting them are two black women. So yeah, 
So it's it's fucked up. She just doesn't really... I mean, she also was like, I, you know, she pulled the classic. I mean, I came here for me. Like, it's not like she, she didn't say, I didn't come here to make friends, but she came very close to it. I'm here for me. And like, at the end of the day, blah, blah, blah. So she said, I don't even think she... When they, when they were trying to explain to her, like, why what she said wasn't okay, she was kind of like, I don't really get what you're saying. <laughs> like, she, I, to this day, she probably still doesn't get it. I do wonder, I, if I'm Zach also, like, we talked about last week, Brianna, one of my least favorite people on the yeah. show. I like that she self-eliminated, though. Like, I like that she recognized yeah. it wasn't happening, and she took her, like, that, she has a lot of dignity, and I like it. But for her to go home... And be like, I'm going home. I don't even have like a horse in this race anymore. But I'd like to tell you, she's not a good person. I was like, oh shit. Like, I wonder what she was... She had to have been saying more to Brianna that we didn't see. Yes, absolutely. And I liked it. Be be a pot stir on the way out. Why not? It's very traitors, you know? It's like when they stand up and they like say something. It's very traitors. But like multiple... Like also like Brooklyn, there was a bunch of women that were kind of like, yeah, no, she's not great. So... We definitely missed some of the stuff that she was doing, but she seemed very unaware. I think this gets at how the show is being put together this season, which nothing has really happened. Like, it seems like there's Christina drama and it was like weirdly almost downplayed in, in favor of like, when I watched Katie's date at the museum, which I want to talk more about, and even Allie's like date where Allie and, and he talk about like what Allie deserves. I was just like, What's been happening? Like, how have they filled the minutes of this show? I don't, I don't even know. And it feels like they're trying to make it deliberately, like, not that controversial. And then there's like these things happening outside of the show, like with Greer, and then us being like, what, what actually happened with Christina? She's clearly like not that nice, but we're not seeing it. Like, it's really weird. It's kind of like just they're giving you all these clues, but we're not actually like getting much drama. I don't know. I, I find it very strange. I never thought about it, to be honest with you. But it is weird. They usually like cling to that stuff. Yeah. I like I don't know shit about Katie and Allie and they got one on ones. Like Katie and Allie were both like alluded to having had like bad previous relationships and like it being traumatic and stuff. And I I when I watched both, I was like, Am I missing something? Like what happened to these women? Is there anything actually there? Do they like what? I, it was just it's very confusing. <laughs> I don't know, but both dates made me think to myself, Juliet, if you're on The Bachelor, what are, like, what are, on your first date, what are you bringing up to, like, hook him in? I mean, if I, what am I bringing up to hook him in? I, I'm just trying to have fun. Do we have to, like, talk about trauma? Because I don't want to talk about that on a first date. I would want, I, maybe we'd talk about, like, I don't know, the best first date you ever had, or, like, I, I I wouldn't even do that. I would just be like, what kind of TV shows do you watch? Like, do you watch the challenge? <laughs> watching watching this date, I was thinking to myself, because obviously they, we had both of them. I was like, wait, they're both talking about like things that have happened. Like, I just can't imagine sitting down and being like, Yeah, so my ex-boyfriend cheated on me. Like, why? Yeah. I feel like that's like two months into the relationship. You're talking about like uh- I don't know either. You know, I'm like, I'm working on my trust with you. This is why I don't trust you. Like something like that. But 30 minutes in, I'm not bringing up like the worst thing that happened to me in a relationship. But I have to assume they're told to talk about. I don't know. It's they have to be right. I don't want that. I I also like wouldn't be interested in a guy that I'm on like my first or second date with being like, just so you know, you deserve the world. You deserve so much more than the bare minimum. I would just be like, what do you know? How do you know what I deserve? Like, you don't know me. I yeah. just, it just puts them both in a bad position. Like, I don't even, like, what are people supposed to talk about on first dates? I don't, it's just like, the sign of a good date is like, you just sort of like vibe and it just flows. Like, you don't need to like prepare your, tra- yeah. your relationship trauma. But on this show, we don't really see that. I know. Like, I would just like to see a date where like, they're laughing and yeah. like, talking about like, oh, have you been to this concert? I went to this concert once and it was blah, blah, blah. I have four brothers and oh my God, like I drank pee when I was four. Like whatever it was. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> You bring that up ran- so much. It must have really scarred you. <laughs> I was trying to think of like just really weird shit you can bring up that like make people laugh or that are interesting. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. I just can't imagine being like, yeah, my boyfriend cheated on me. Yeah. Like we've known each other for five minutes. That's not something that I think you need to know about me in the first five minutes. It, 
maybe it could affect me later in our relationship. So I should tell you that's what happened to me in our past. But like five minutes in, do you need to know that about me? It's not no. who I am. No, definitely not. Uh, it's it's super weird. Also, Allie, it seemed like she could have been going there because she was like so... Um, she was like on so much adrenaline after that they landed from the skydive. And then they cut away from it. But I was like, let's see her personality. Like, show us some more of that. Um, I will say I was I was really pleasantly surprised by Allie. Yeah, I liked her. She seems cool. She seems fun and lighthearted. Exactly what we're looking for. Yes, but if she were to get eliminated, I would like to have her on the show and ask her if she really collects porcelain dolls. Because <laughs> you find that Isn't creepy? That her? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think she's from Houston, right? Yeah. And collects porcelain dolls. Yeah, I think that's really creepy. I liked her and she seemed fun, but like also I learned nothing about her. Like I don't have any new information on Allie other than she seemed like a good time and was like down for whatever. Yeah, I didn't think that he liked that she's like, I fool people all the time, but I don't think she meant it like that. Mm -hmm. But that was a little like, uh oh, probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah. But otherwise, I liked her. Uh, Katie was boring. Very pretty. Boring. Katie's really boring. However, awesome date. I think that's a really fun date. But they should call it the Ross and Rachel. Like that is I'm like, was that intentionally based on friends? Like, I don't know. Did you do you know that episode? Yeah. And we talked about this with, I think we talked about this. For, remember when Clayton did that date with Michelle, I think? Did they go to the museum? Oh, well, I love museum dates, like in general. Like, I think that's great. But... With Clayton on Michelle's season? Yeah, they yeah. went to the museum. Did they, did they sleep over? No. But like a science museum sleepover is like pretty fun. Also, when she was like, I think we should move the cot closer. He's like, that can happen. I was like, ooh, Zach. Cool. Sa- saucy. But like, he wasn't even helping. You could just see her moving the cot. It was funny. Yeah, I don't know. Fun date, in my opinion. I would rank it a 6 out of 10. I think I'd rather jump out of plane. Really? That's the difference between you and me. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that it would be my ideal first date. Um, but I think it was more fun. Like, selfishly for me, I think that that experience would be better. Mm. I would like a museum sleepover. It's always been a dream of mine. I, ever since I read the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil Frank Weiler when I was a child. So, <laughs> which is a really good book. I recommend. <laughs> I have no interest in sleeping over at a museum. I generally like museums. Um, so it's not like a horrible date. It's just like, also like looking at dinosaurs, you're just like, well, that's what why do we do here? That's why I'm like, just call it the friends date. Like, instead of just being like, wow, we had a great idea. It's like, Everyone on this television show has watched Friends on Netflix and is very familiar with this. So let's talk about it. I have it. not watched Friends on Netflix, but... Okay. You're honestly, you're in a minority. It's really... It's now on Peacock, I think, but it had like a huge second life in, in COVID because of it being on Netflix. That's why they did that yeah, like maybe reunion. for younger people, but didn't you like watch it when you were little? Yeah. But I'm saying this group, yeah. these, these, these 26 and unders, like they're watching that on Netflix in college and whatever. Maybe. Friends is just very popular. And so they should just acknowledge... It is very popular. That's where they got the idea. They didn't make it up themselves. On an actual... This date, like, are you actually going to, like, go around and read what the signs say? Or are you just, like, talking? I would do both. I mean, it's a good way... Like, I think a museum's good because there's, like, stuff to look at and talk about together. There's, like, distractions. what are you talking about? Do you believe in dinosaurs? Like, what are we talking about? (laughs) Well... I'm glad you brought that up because there was that one weird moment where she was like, imagine if we were alive with dinosaurs. And he was like, I don't think we'd fare that well. It's just like, what are you talking about, you idiots? Callie, if you haven't gathered this already, I'm a mega nerd. I love museums. I'm really into science museums. I love a planetarium. I like a 3D science movie at a planetarium. And so, yeah, I would if someone wanted to go to the museum with me and have a sleepover and like, get to know each other while also discussing like things we're learning. That sounds awesome to me. So... Okay. No. But it sounds awesome to you because this guy that you might be interested in getting to know clearly likes similar things as you. Sure. But if The Bachelor is choosing these dates, this is not Zach's thing. (laughs) No. (laughs) So like, it should mean less. Like, this wouldn't be my date then because... Out of all the dates that you get from The Bachelor, like, no, this is not for me. I think of a Bachelor date, ideal as a catamaran. Like, it's just a day, a day, a luxurious yeah. day on the water. That's the best case as scenario. As long as the water's flat. 
<laughs> flat. You don't have to touch it. No animals, no critters. Flat and see-through. Those are the best bachelor dates. But for me, IRL, a museum sleepover would be really fun. So just saying, just saying that. Okay. So for everyone listening who wants to take Juliet on a date, <laughs> huge plus if you take her to the museum and you may seal the deal if you somehow are able to sleep over. Yeah. And that fucking hit the planetarium. I think pla- planetarium is more ideal to me than just museum. But I, I, I love the museum. American Museum of Natural History here in New York City is just a wonderful place. I think I would like that more because there's actually things to talk about and debate about. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. History, but like art. I love art, but like art might be interesting because you could see taste, but that could be a huge ick for me. They talked about icks on this episode. They did. That was in the, the post credit scene. It was funny. Are you someone that gets the ick easy or not so easy? Not so easy. Um, uh, what do you I'm, think I am? Uh, very easy. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very easy for me. I remember this one guy said a word once. And I was like, Oof. For me, it's just more like, this is a deal breaker. It's just more like, yeah, I don't think so. It's not, but it's not like a real ick. Like once I went on a date and someone ordered a glass of milk. It was brunch. I will, I will say that. But it was disgusting. Oh, yeah. That's an ick for sure. <laughs> but that's not like a deal breaker. That's an ick. Yeah. Sure. I just think that, that deal breaker, like that's just, it's just the new terminology. I guess. I mean, I feel like a deal breaker is like you voted for Trump. That's a deal breaker for me. Yeah, for sure. I think that also... Well, at least you come back to this. We talk about um, Love Island because I feel like this, like this ticking boxes thing, like that's more deal breakers, and like an ick is more real world stuff. Ticking boxes. That would be the name of my yeah. Love Island podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Let's talk about the Bachelor Bowl. Um, Once again, they did tackle football. I have to say, I do love that it's tackle football. Great, great shit. Like it's so insane they make them do it, but also like good, good, good on them. I I do think it's wild that like there's tackle football in the Bachelor, but Pro Bowl we get flag football. Hilarious. I'm offended that Hannah Storm is in that chair with Jesse Palmer. Like obviously it should be you or me or both of us. It's ridiculous. <sighs> I thought you were saying that you didn't like her. I was like, oh no, I was shocked they got someone so like she's not a boy. She, you know, she's part of my childhood, M- NBA and NBC. So I'll always have a soft spot for Hannah Storm, the Michael Jordan years. But no, it should be us. Like, I don't understand. Also, did, yeah. I, I'm assuming you didn't listen to Jesse Palmer and I, but at the end, he made a comment about Florida State and like, you know, yeah. anti Florida State because he went to UF. And I was like, um, mm-hmm. are you aware that my podcast co host played volleyball at UF? 
And he was like, no, I'm not. And I was like, yeah, Callie Curry. Then he was like, what? Well, she must be extremely talented and athletic, goddess, smart. I was like, yeah, she is. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> wow, I might listen to it now just to, you know, hear some compliments on Monday morning. We also had like a bit of tension because I was trying to get, I was trying to understand like what his day is like when he's hosting. And I was like, what was it like on the cruise? Like, what did you eat for breakfast? Oh, gosh. And he wouldn't answer. He was like, you know, truffles. Like, he was like making a joke of it. And I was like, no, like, you're not giving me anything here. Tell me, like, what did you eat? (laughs) I actually want to break down. You woke up, you went to the bathroom, you showered. Like, tell me exactly what your day was like. Yeah, I was like, I'm interested in the minutia of making The Bachelor. And he just thought it was so weird, which was, which was honestly really funny. (laughs) I feel like that's a good question. I would like to know what his day is like, because for how much, I mean, I don't know how much he gets paid, but like Chris Harrison, like we always were like, he worked for like 30 minutes a week and got so much money. Jesse, I think is similar. And then I did a deep Mm. dive on his wife, who's like absolutely stunning. So congratulations to both of them. And... (laughs) They have kids? Not yet. She, they got married fairly recently. Um, She like traveled with him. Like she went to a lot of the places. So... Yeah, I mean, he has enough free time just to be hanging out with his beautiful wife in these foreign countries. So that was dope. Anyway, in the Bachelor Bowl, I was very confused. Anastasia was like, maybe had a head head injury, but she was fine. But then later at the rose ceremony, Genevieve, her arm is like in a sling and some kind of cat. So she got really hurt and we just didn't see it. Yeah, well, if it was Christina, they're probably protecting her. Also, that would be another black girl that she went after. Yes, yeah, seriously. Fuck that. I like Genevieve a lot. She seems great. Um, I really like her. I want to hear I want to I want more of her. I wish she got a one-on-one this week. Hopefully soon. I don't really feel like I know anyone. The only people I, I feel like I I have opinions on are people I don't like. I like Ariel the way she talks and I find it irritating. God. That hot tub scene was rough. I really like Davia. She seems like a nice friend. Mhm. But yeah, the hot tub scene with Ariel was I really had rough. opinions on like Brianna, Christina. Yeah, now they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Is there anyone that you like are like full in think they could win? I think Katie seems like she's got a really good chance. She's really boring. Seems like a good fit for, Beth, for Zach. That is true. What do you think? I, I, I don't know. I still think Jess is a dark horse candidate. I think Jess is going really far. Young She's Jess. So young. This I, this episode, she came across even younger. Yeah. I think like her pool party look. What was it? I was like, oh, I don't wow. remember. She had her hair like really slicked back. She didn't have a lot oh, of makeup yeah. on. In general, I guess she doesn't wear a lot of makeup. Her and she Greer. goes to, like the dewy look. Yeah. Her and Greer. Yeah. She just looked so when she was they were like sitting on the steps and she was talking. She's like, I'm not shaking anymore. Yeah. She was like, I was I, like, oh my God, she's so young. I think he's gonna be really into that though. I think she I think she's gonna go really far. Also, her hobbies and passions, bananagrams, puppies, romance. I mean, like, that's perfect for him. What are bananagrams? <laughs> uh the you know, the the game where it's like sort of like making sort of like playing Scrabble, but like without a board. You have to keep building words on top of mm, it's mm-hmm. fun. I that's think you'd like it. Yeah, probably. Um, I do think Greer's going to go far. I don't know. We haven't gotten a lot of her. I hope. I really hope not. Um, yeah, also, we didn't this past episode, but I still think that she's in the mix. There's also Katie. Um, well, you know, I, I've just picked her, but I mean, there's also Katie because she's from Austin. I feel like that's really... Like, yeah. I like that, I feel like Zach, who doesn't like conflict, like that's really good for him too. <laughs> yeah, but do you hear what we're saying? Like all the things we're saying are things that we knew before we started watching the show. It's true. <laughs> oh, man. I was thinking this morning when I was watching Love Island, I was thinking to myself, like, you know what the big difference? And maybe it's because it's this season, but a big difference between Love Island and Bachelor, and I think we're going to switch to this soon anyways, but yeah. is like you get so much more of the personality on Love Island. Oh, way more. Like, I, you you get to actually know who these people are. So like, to your point that you made earlier, I wanted to bring this up. There's a moment, I think you've seen this, between Kai and Anna Mae, where they're like, talking about true crime and how like, and like true crime podcasts and documentaries and how she's really into it. And like, you, I definitely get the sense that like, Anna Mae is like, kind of like, a weirdo in, in a good way. But like, you get a mm-hmm. sense of her personality and 
because they just show so much more of like them doing nothing and like lying around and hanging out, you do get to know them because you're like, what do you like when you kind of like forget the cameras are around and like just trying to fill time? And that's like what I was trying to get from Jesse. And that's one of the reasons why it's so entertaining is like seeing them, the guys like getting ready together in their room and then like what the girls are talking about while they're putting on their makeup. Like it, it, and this is true Real Housewives too. It's like, it's the small, at this point of reality TV, your people like, understand what they're doing. It's the small moments like in between scenes where like you really get to know people. And The Bachelor gives us none of that. Like literally none of it. Nothing. Yeah. Which makes it feel a lot more like scripted because like the only parts you see are when everyone is on. Yeah. Like you want the parts where people aren't on, where they're just like being themselves. Um, There's been like the funniest like moments when you think like back through Love Island. It's like when the girls are sitting there or not girls. It could be anybody anyone they're just like a group sitting there and like ra- someone will randomly like bring up something in history and yeah. like one of the people are like what are you talking about and you're like how does that person not like i remember once someone was like london's a country right and they were like <laughs> no and they were like what country's london in like you know what i mean like it's just like moments like that where you're like like it's funny and that's what you're there for yeah i don't need to see when like the camera the actual cameraman is standing in front of you and you're like Hey, da 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 da, and like you're probably not gonna ask if London's a country in that moment. It's it's true of like every show that's good now. Like it's true of the Circle where they're just like doing shit alone in those tiny apartments. And Love Is Blind when the, when Ravens like fucking doing Pilates while listening to a sob story. <laughs> like seeing who people <laughs> yeah. are when they when they stop like performing for a producer is is really interesting and. That, and that's like why the ick conversation at the very end was like one of the most interesting things to happen this week is because like we actually yeah. got to know them and like understand like who's familiar with that concept like who is not and and things like that it's like we just we that's just not the show though but that's it needs to be and that's why it feels I think so like retro it could and be, like though. they're together twenty four yeah, seven it, it could be it's so it's totally true it could be so take notes on that note yeah let's talk about Love Island who's your fave so far well I think it's Obviously, it's still early days for me. Early days, but yeah. I like... I think Kai is attractive. I think he's the most attractive guy. Ron, to me right now, is giving me the most personality. Mm-hmm. I have to say, when I first saw Shaq, I was like, what? Like, not my type. Usually, they get very like model-esque looking people. It does not fit into that box. So I was like, eh. Um, but he has shown me personality and now he's sweet. He's grown on me. He's a very emotional man. Yeah. So those are my thir- I mean, Farmer Will, is that his name? Yeah, Farmer, Farmer Will. Will. Yeah. He's a lot. And I think he's gonna go far because I think he's just gonna be like the friend that no one wants to send home. Farmer Will, I'm I'm all in. I, I would not want to date Farmer <laughs> Will, but I would absolutely like to have Farmer Will around. He seems really fun. See? He keeps things light. He's like definitely like cuts. Cuts the tension. Have you seen any of the bombshells come in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So those those are my guy favorites. Okay. Zara is easily my favorite. I thought Zara and Will, when she was like doing the catwalk thing with him and he was like making a beat that just, was just like so bad, was so funny. I absolutely loved it. It was hilarious. Zara has really good chat. Yeah, definitely. I also like that she sort of Literally, she gave everyone a shot and Mm -hmm. caused a lot of problems. I have to say, I think Tom is really hot, like just a very, very handsome man. But he has terrible chat, so boring. But that's that's how I feel about Tanya. Yeah, Tanya. I think she's like obviously she's had a lot of work done, but like she looks like a Kardashian. She clearly was like, "Give me the Kim." Yeah, generally like a pretty girl, whatever. But like watching paint dry, no, thank you. And she's insecure. Like she's not even like comfortable well, right, yeah. rightfully so I guess yeah I also said this in my group chat but I'm like if you're going to pay for a fake ass it's confusing to me that you also would not want to like throw it around she's a, she's a weirdo I don't know I, I think she looks too much like a Kardashian like the new Kardashians like very much like what Kim looked like a few years ago and she's like yeah. this, this is what I'm going for she does seem like a good friend though I'll say that I think I think Olivia seems like actually a good friend. I was prepared to like not like Olivia, but I actually like her a lot and think she seems kind of sweet. So I, I like her. 
my I think Kai and Tom are by far the most attractive people on the sh- the show, like full stop. So I think I think that Tom is attractive, but then there's certain camera angles. I don't know if he gets like overheated because they do talk about how how it's boiling. Why don't they go in the pool? Well, they do go in the pool, but you can't really talk in the pool. Like it's yeah. hard with mics. So yeah. I think like I don't know. Um, I think that's why they sit with their feet in the pool a lot. Also for like the women, they have like their hair and makeup done. Right. But even so, just like up to your chest or something. Yeah. But whenever they do like interviews, when they come out, they say they're in the pool all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you just, you just can't, you can't hear it. Yeah. 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 There are some like times where Tom looks like wet and like red. <laughs> Sweaty. But like when he first came in, I was like, oh, he's clearly the most attractive guy. Yeah, he's his, got yeah, the footballer look, the man, the Manchester accent. But don't you think it's interesting? I wouldn't say Kai has like a ton of personality either. No, I, I gotta say, don't want my, my fourth graders teacher on Love Island. I would be like, yeah, I think it's time for a new school. <laughs> <laughs> he's a science <laughs> teacher. <laughs> I like that just because most people are like, Model. Ring girl. Yeah. Model. Yeah. yeah. Yo, these guys are professional. Ron's I a financial know. advisor. I, I like I like Ron too. Yeah. I also this past episode, I just finished episode three. They zoomed in on him a lot. I didn't realize that like his eyes were green and blue. Kind of like a glass eye. Yeah. One's green, one's blue. I think it's because of the eye injury. I don't think it was always like that. Oh uh, well, I'm into it. He has good personality. I will say that um it is interesting to me other than Zara I think Zara's actually really pretty but attractiveness correlates to personality for the guys yeah like the more attractive you are the less personality you have which probably so in, in the real in, world inverse yeah, yeah in the in the in the real world that's probably true like they can get away with just like yeah. looking good yeah Tom doesn't have to work hard he's a footballer in England. meanwhile Will is <laughs> working at yeah his his Instagram is like deranged. Stop it is going so going to their Instagrams. I'm not learning anything from it. I just see him with his sheep. He said he has 1,500 sheep. That's crazy. I mean, the Gross. video you sent me was bizarre. And he shears them. Like he shows himself like shearing them. It's just like farming. It's crazy. It's really crazy. I I enjoy it. I, I really I'm wonder in. though, like for him specifically, like where did the casting directors find this guy? I think he was already famous on TikTok as like the TikTok farmer. Oh, okay. That's the impression I get. But to your point, I didn't dive too deep. Plus, like, I'm just not doing. I'm just not doing TikTok. I, I I've made the decision. I will watch what you send me, and I really appreciate that you keep me up to date. But like, <laughs> I just can't. It's just, it's just not what I'm not what I want in my life right now. So, whatever. I'll have to miss out on some things well, like makeup well, tutorials. Once you start, you can't stop. So I'm not going to stop you. Final question for you, Callie. What's the latest with the second Bachelor Nation who's getting divorced? Any new ne- news? No, but I heard it was um, on t- via TikTok. What's his name? Brown hair. Oh my God, it's going to kill me. Jaden Tanner? No, 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 no. It's not anyone that was mentioned in those couples. It's like someone oh. random. And I don't know if who he married was in Bachelor Nation. I can't remember. He's like um, a little chunkier. I mean, not chunky, but just like chunkier than like the chiseled men. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. I want to say his name starts with a D. Um, brown hair. Okay, give me more. <sighs> Derek. Oh, Derek Peth. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I heard about that too. People think he's divorced. Who is... Getting divorced. He, yeah, apparently they on TikTok they were saying that he's at bars in the, whatever city he lives in and doesn't wear... He his, was in New York for a while. Doesn't wear his ring anymore. Oh, interesting. Sad. But who is he married to? Paradise. This woman named Saffron something. She was not in Bachelor Nation. She was a she was a model. Okay. Saffron like v- Vader or something like that. And I believe Derek was on JoJo season, if I recall correctly. You were cor- you are correct. I got to JoJo, and that's where I found him. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, that's like not really big news. I don't care. No, but that's like because everyone's like, "Where's the news? Where's the news?" And then people are like, "Now people are speculating that it's Derek because he's been spotted at bars in his neighborhood not wearing his ring anymore." Sad. All right. Well, Derek, we're we're hoping you're hanging in there. Same to Saffron. Thank you very much to our producer, Ashley Smith, for producing this episode. Callie, 
please watch more Love Island so we can watch it or discuss it. Excuse me. I will be up to date by next Monday. I have decided to leave Seth in the dust. Wow. He unfortunately wants to watch basketball till all of it's over. And the last game usually doesn't end till like 1231. And then he wants to watch Love Island. No. I can only stay awake for five minutes of that. Oh my God. I mean, making it to one o'clock. If, if, yeah, if I'm not already sleeping. Sheesh. Also, I don't know. Well, maybe he can catch up with you in the off week that's coming up after All Star. Well, he's injured this week, so he should have a lot of time. I was wondering if he was actually injured or if that was like a trade play. Like, oh, got to stay out in case he's going to be traded tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then I was worried because I don't want you to move. This just fell out. So I wonder if it was plugged in the whole time. (laughs) Oh, my God. We shall see. (laughs) Um, All right. Weird ending to this podcast. (laughs) To the Brooklyn Nets, please don't trade Seth Curry. I want Callie to stay here. Have a great week, everybody. Adios.